Six years have passed since the release of Forza Motorsport 7, and Turn 10 Studios have been hard at work on a new entry in the beloved racing series. The simply titled Forza Motorsport is an advanced track-based racer developed for current gen console hardware, emphasizing advanced detail and sophisticated ray tracing effects. It's an impressive effort as John has detailed in his preview videos, but with the full version of the game in hand, how do the game's 20 tracks hold up? How have the graphics been enhanced since the last series entry? And have we seen any notable improvements over the preview code? Right from the opening, it's clear that Forza Motorsport is an impressive looking racing game. We see intricate car models, detailed and well lit tracks, and ray traced reflections. There are a lot of great looking track based racing titles out there, and this is definitely one of the better looking racing games in recent memory. I think the best place to start is by drawing some close comparisons with Forza Motorsport 7. Forza Motorsport 7 was Turn 10's final foray on Xbox One hardware, and the new title clearly shows the advantages of crafting a game around a higher tier of hardware capability. The two games have 13 tracks in common along with hundreds of shared cars, so there's a lot of comparison points to draw from. Let's start with probably the most iconic track in Forza Motorsport history, Maple Valley. Cruising along here in a 2009 Mercedes SL65 AMG. Here we see the enormous improvement made to foliage in this new entry, which is probably the most singularly striking enhancement over the prior title. The foliage is complex and lit realistically, with subtle occlusion where the leaves are at their most dense, and accurate self-shadowing. The old trees were simply two flat billboards intersecting at a 90 degree angle, and didn't really interact properly with the game's lighting, with most lighting details simply drawn in the foliage textures. With enough speed they looked fine enough, but they clearly were an area that needed considerable improvement, and the new Forza Motorsport delivers excellent results here. Turn 10 puts the fictional nature of the Maple Valley track to good use too by reworking the track with lots of overhanging trees alongside the track edge, creating a more dynamic looking track. The game's lighting in general gets a big boost. Forza Motorsport 7 tended to have a flat appearance, which looked unnatural in shaded areas. Its sequel typically has a richer lighting presentation, which is especially notable in complex areas like trackside stands. A lot of this stems from the game's ray-traced ambient occlusion, which is present here on the Xbox Series X version of Forza Motorsport in its performance RT and visuals modes. Global illumination also seems considerably enhanced, with the track and environment taking on a more natural hue through a range of lighting conditions. At times, these improvements produce a very striking image, with a much stronger presentation of lighting relative to the earlier title. For this game, Turn 10 has transitioned from a more heavily pre-calculated lighting solution, which relied on baked AO and shadow maps, to one that emphasizes real-time versions of those techniques, at least as we're seeing here on Series X. As a result, races can now smoothly move through different times of day as they progress, and each course features a range of starting times, time progression rates, and prevailing weather conditions. The new real-time shadows have their limitations, with moderate resolution and a reduced update rate, which is about 15 FPS in this close range shot, but make Forza tracks a lot more flexible. The clouds have also seen a real-time transformation and are now volumetric, which is a big upgrade over the cruder clouds that we saw in Forza Motorsport 7. They still don't track properly with the movement of the player car though, and feel disconnected from your traversal of each circuit. Each track has been remodeled to some degree or another. The actual track surface used for gameplay was rescanned for this entry, and the trackside environment has seen a bit of a visual overhaul as well. Some of the temporary track adornments like these tents have been upgraded, while others that have seen real life upgrades like Silverstone are tweaked to reflect those changes. Generally speaking, the tracks do seem quite similar to their Forza Motorsport 7 counterparts in terms of geometry, but there have been some polygonal changes here, alongside improved lighting and materials work, and the updated foliage of course. Some of the tracks still look a bit drab, though their real world counterparts aren't exactly visually arresting either. Plus the crowds are no longer composed of 2D billboards, and are actually entirely real 3D models. Though I did notice that the new crowds are almost always less dense than in Forza Motorsport 7, perhaps as a performance sparing trade-off. 
The only big disappointment here is the texture filtering, which is very poor on consoles, with smeared detail on the track surface and on trackside barriers. Forza Motorsport also pulls ahead in car rendering. Now the actual car geometry for returning cars is often quite similar to Forza Motorsport 7. Like Gran Turismo, the Forza games rely on a large library of car models, which are used across multiple games and upgraded over time. So polygonally speaking, these models seem very similar to their previous gen counterparts. There are some definite tweaks and enhancements though, like the wheels which have been remodeled. Select elements in the cars have also been tweaked, like their dashboards, which are now properly self-shadowed as well. Unfortunately, in photo mode, non-player cars are still using a lower LOD like we saw in the preview, which makes this mode less useful. But the big change comes down to the car materials, which have been overhauled for this new entry. Just look at the carbon fiber here, which looks glossy and reflects the sky's blue tint at an angle. The differentiation between the metals, fabric, and plastics here is very clear, whereas they tended to blend together before. Textures have been replaced and material properties have been overhauled, such that the car interiors often look dramatically different than we saw previously, and are much improved. Car paint also looks more correct to my eyes. Simulating car paint is very complex and it's hard to place exactly what's changed, but across a variety of lighting conditions, I feel that Forza Motorsport looks subtly more correct than its previous generation counterpart. I'm sure the ray traced ambient occlusion plays a role here, as well as the improved reflections. But let's move away from the Forza Motorsport 7 comparisons and move on to a more thorough discussion of those reflections, because they've been a source of some controversy in this title. Essentially, Forza Motorsport uses a mix of techniques for in-game reflections, cube maps, screen space reflections, planner reflections, and ray traced reflections. The cube maps are used for trackside reflections, and real-time cube maps are used for most reflections on the car bodies themselves. Screen space reflections show up on wet track surfaces. Planner reflections are used for in-game mirrors in the cockpit view. Finally, ray traced reflections can be found on car bodies for very reflective surfaces, but are only typically used for car self-reflections and for the reflections of other cars. Limited ray traced reflections are also visible during gameplay on some trackside surfaces while in the visuals mode on Series X. During certain cutscenes, more exhaustive ray traced reflections are in use, however, as well as in the game's menus. For those who have watched John's preview coverage, the reflections seem generally unchanged from the preview code. Turn 10 have essentially blended a bunch of techniques together to get some key benefits of RT reflections, like the ability to reflect dynamic objects and showcase car self-reflections without committing completely to a ray tracing solution that could prove too expensive for a 60 FPS game. It mostly works, especially when racing at high speed, but there are some notable flaws too. The real-time cube maps update at just 30 FPS for one. This means that most of the in-game reflections look a bit choppy when the game is running at 60 FPS. Forza Motorsport 7 also used 30 FPS reflections, so this isn't exactly an unprecedented compromise, but it would have been nice to get a 60 Hz update here instead. The cube map details do seem to be duplicated across cars as well. Just look at how this one pole is visible at the exact same location across all of these cars, or how this overhang flashes across all the cars at the same time. Moreover, early preview footage from the game, as well as some of the shipping game's real-time cinematics, showcase expanded RT reflections, with the environment displayed as well. This is where some understandable consternation online has erupted. It's a bit disappointing that we can't get these in-game, even in the 30fps visuals mode on Series X or on the PC build. Again, what Turn 10 has shipped is totally fine, but expectations were set a bit higher with the game's promotional footage. So overall, Forza Motorsport is a very good looking racing game. Forza Motorsport 7 isn't an ugly title by any means, but this new entry comprehensively bests it from a visual perspective, and lands among the better looking track based racers we've seen so far. The only real disappointment is that the underlying technology isn't being pushed as far as it seems it could be. So far, I've been showcasing the Series X and its performance RT mode, which is in my view the best way to experience the game on current gen consoles. So how do the various modes stack up, and where does Series S land? 
On Series X, there are three visual modes, Performance, Performance RT, and Visuals. General visual settings are quite similar for all three modes, with the exception of ray tracing. The performance mode completely lacks any ray tracing whatsoever, so you don't see any reflections of other cars while racing, as they aren't included in the cube maps. The other visual modes include RT reflections on cars, which seem to be about the same in both modes. Ray traced ambient occlusion is also absent from the performance mode. RTAO makes a surprisingly big impact on the game's visuals, greatly improving car shading and vastly increasing the fidelity of the rendering of car interiors. In areas with complex geometry, the RTAO simply makes a huge difference. If you do look closely, you can observe the RTAO denoising in motion, but in general gameplay the results appear very stable. And across the performance RT and visuals modes, the RTAO presentation looks substantially the same. The only real fundamental settings difference between the performance RT and visuals modes is the addition of very limited trackside RT reflections in the visual mode. This trackside barrier uses a very basic cube map in the performance RT mode, while the visuals mode gets an RT reflection of the overhang as well. This is pretty hard to notice in typical play. There's also a small improvement to real-time cube maps in the visuals mode, as they display further into the distance. On top of those differences, there is a bit of a spread in resolution between the three modes. In my testing, in typical play, the performance mode is at about 2160p, the performance RT mode averaged around 1584p, and the visuals mode came in at about 2160p typically. These modes appear to use dynamic resolution to keep performance up when under load. If we go back to Forza Motorsport 7 for a second, even the lowest resolution mode in Forza Motorsport achieves substantially better image quality. Forza Motorsport 7 is running at a full 2160p with 4 times MSAA here, but fails to cleanly resolve fine detail and address specular aliasing. The overall image in Forza Motorsport is much more stable. It does still exhibit some issues at times, but the switch to TAA has definitely paid off here. Series S PAX 2 modes called performance and visuals. Both lack all forms of RT during gameplay and replays, and basically resemble the performance mode on Series X. This has a pretty big impact on the graphics, unfortunately. There's not much between them in terms of basic visual settings, but the performance mode does see some downgrades relative to the visuals mode, in the quality of real-time cube maps, and in foliage density. The performance mode is typically about 1080p, while the visuals mode is usually at 1440p. In direct comparisons against the Series X code, both modes on Series S look substantially blurrier and considerably lacking detail. The performance mode in particular is quite soft and doesn't fare well against the relatively sharp output on Series X. It's fair to say that the Series S is a bit of a disappointment in Forza Motorsport. The ray tracing is absent outside of the game's menus, and image quality is a lot worse than we see on its more powerful sibling. Thankfully, both series consoles manage a basically impeccable output in framerate terms. I tried my hardest to push the game, putting myself in the middle of huge grids on rainy overcast tracks and driving very poorly. These are situations that reliably produce framerate dips in other racing games, but don't seem to have any effect whatsoever here. Forza is just perfectly locked to its framerate target, so the game is a steady 30fps in the visuals modes and 60fps in the performance modes. Outside of gameplay, Forza Motorsport runs at 30fps, so all of the game's menus and replays aim for and hit a flat 30fps update. This is quite impressive stuff, Turn 10 has clearly calibrated the game around hitting high frame rates consistently on console hardware, and to achieve 60 FPS gameplay with two RTFX on Series X is a bit of an accomplishment. It's a perfectly smooth experience, and the game's high quality motion blur perfectly accentuates the flow of the action. If I had to choose, I'd stick with the performance RT mode on Series X and the performance mode on Series S. The 60fps update improves gameplay hugely, and the graphical losses relative to the visuals mode on either console aren't very significant. It's just too bad that the Series S has been totally stripped of ray tracing features, but at least it does manage to hold consistent frame rates. 
As a final note, I did encounter some glitches with Forza Motorsport while playing. The game crashed the Xbox dashboard several times while I was testing, and the game exhibited occasional issues like broken car reflections or flickering track surfaces. Forza Motorsport seems to have an issue with its gamma presentation as well, as the blacks take on a grayish appearance after you exit the visual settings menu without restarting the game. This was also a problem in the preview build, and it really does damage the look of the game. It's likely that these issues will be stamped out within the first few patches, as some of the problems from the preview build already seem to have been fixed for the final release, but the game is coming in a little bit too hot for comfort. Forza Motorsport is a very good looking game, and it plays well too. Like prior Forza titles, it feels perfectly responsive and snappy on a console gamepad, with a lot of tuning options to suit players of different tastes and skill levels. The game has a bit of a simcade racing sensibility, and strikes a good balance between on-track realism and playability, veering slightly more towards the arcade side of things relative to recent Gran Turismo entries. If you've played prior Forza Motorsport titles, you'll mostly know what to expect here, though there are some interesting tweaks for this game. There's a detailed in-game penalty system, with appropriate punishments for overtaking off-track and other infractions, which can be set to more lenient or harsher enforcement presets as you see fit. I wasn't as much of a fan of the ability to pick your own starting position before each single player race event, in lieu of qualifying or a set race start position. It's a lot easier to keep a car behind than to overtake, so starting in a good grid spot and holding back a queue of AI cars seemed like a strategy that was a bit too powerful. I'd prefer grid spots were assigned based on qualifying speed, or preset on a per race basis to give players a more healthy challenge. But I've definitely enjoyed what I've played of the game so far, and I think Forza Motorsport will prove pleasing to series veterans. The visuals are a big part of that appeal as well, of course, and this entry is a pretty huge upgrade over Forza Motorsport 7, with much better lighting, greatly improved PBR materials, high quality foliage, and more accurate reflections. I'm not sure if it's the best looking track based racer out there, but it's certainly in the mix. You do get the sense that the game could be pushed harder though, at least on higher end platforms, with the RT reflections unfortunately falling short of expectations and the promised RTGI for PC totally absent, at least at launch. Still, I don't think that players will be disappointed. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell for YouTube notifications. Check out the Patreon at digitalfriendly.net for exclusive and early access content, and to get in touch, use social media. Thanks for watching.